This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. Vanessa Price is the author of a book called Big Macs and Burgundy, the wine pairings for the real world. And I've never felt more inclined to actually dive into food pairings before. The first time I ever was a little bit interested in foods that should even be eaten together and drinks was when I watched Ratatouille. Mm. And a rat taught me to eat cheese with grapes at the exact same time. (laughs) And it changed my life. So I'm very intrigued. What is she telling people? Well, she's got like real world food that she tells you what wine goes with it. For example, she thinks a Big Mac burger <laughs> yes. deserves I've never called it that before. I'm just reading. <laughs> a Big Mac deserves a nice red wine. And here's her explanation. Red Burgundy's got the same zesty sort of savory profile as the sauce in the Big Mac. And you want a little bit of a tannic profile, which is what protein needs, and you're going to get that from the red wine. And a Pinot Noir has just the amount, a right amount of restraint to sort of make it all work together. Balance. Balance. Exactly. So Pinot wow. Noir for a Big Mac. Science. All I've ever really paired like on my own is uh, if I'm having something really salty, I want beer. If I'm having appetizers, I probably want a Caesar. And then with dessert, I'll have a whiskey. That <laughs> That's as far as I've paired with You food. should start a YouTube channel. Yeah, it would be pretty boring, though. One episode <laughs> is all I got. Uh, she said if you're snacking on Cheetos okay. to drink a Sauvignon Blanc, and this is why. Sauvignon Blanc inherently has high acidity. It's a very crisp, very fresh right. wine. And the sort of savory, salty, cheesiness of the Cheeto goes well with that minerality. See, important stuff here. She even broke down uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. No way. Milk. Uh, no, skip the milk and have a sparkling red like a Lambrusco. And here's why. So you got bitterness from PB&J, you got sweetness from jelly, you got this chewy sort of chunky element from it all together with the bread. The sweetness goes with the PB&J. Oh and then the bubbles wash it all clean. You know, I had a PB&J last night and I'm off the milk. I think it's gross to drink milk. Should I just start slamming booze after I have a late <laughs> night PB&J or what? <laughs> all right, time for recommend something where we recommend something. Yeah. So it was my hairstylist that told me about this. She said, I was telling her how I like to go for walks. And she's like, what dog parks, what trails? And I mentioned Mill Creek Ravine. And she said, next time you're walking it, you need to stop at Hazel Dean Bakery. And I was like, oh, like I rarely ever stop into bakeries because carbs in me. It's a dangerous game. Okay. I'll buy everything. But I couldn't stop thinking about it after she brought it up because she said they have award winning apple fritters. And then as soon as you say apple fritters to someone, how do you not go and get an apple fritter? Right. So made it happen. Went at 1 p.m. on a Saturday, though. Huge fail. Rookie Rookie. mistake. Rookie. You should know that award-winning fritters sell out in the first two hours that they open on a Saturday. Well, even going to any bakery in the afternoon, it's kind of like, what are you doing? doing? What are you doing? So anyway, I hit up Hazel Dean Bakery, didn't get an apple fritter, but I did get the cinnamon buns. And the owners were so sweet. They're like, oh, you're new here. Here's a brownie. And they have these dog treats that are so healthy and good for your dog. And Gordy loved it. Mm -hmm. So just all around a great experience. And there's two locations. So there's Hazel Dean Bakery and then Lucy's Sweets in the Terwilliger South area. Because Lucy is the one that makes these apple fritters. Wow. So like I personally haven't tried it, but I want you to go out. And try the apple fritter. For those that have borderline drinking problems, uh, the best way that I know to direct you to Hazel Dean Bakery <laughs> is it's beside Time Out Pub. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, my recommend something is avoiding comment sections. Okay, good idea. Why? Well, I saw you end up in a little bit of a black hole today in a comment <sighs> section, and yeah. and I just saw what happened to you, and I realize how often that happens to me. Well, I bet you physically saw like my shoulders start yes. to like curve. Yeah, my and, like, posture went bad. Getting really mad. Yeah. like the only people that live in comment sections right now are miserable es- people, especially like. News they, stories. Listen, they have valid reasons to be miserable. I totally sure. understand where majority of people are coming from. Right. But they are trolls under bridges 
they pop out and they just spit and spread negativity okay. because they're miserable. You don't have to play that game. So my my recommend something is uh, they're they're so set in their ways that interacting with them isn't going to change their mind anyway. Right. So save yourself the grief and the slouchy shoulders and the negativity Whew. and just pretend like that's not even an option. And like this goes for a lot of Facebook stuff, yeah. Edmonton Journal stuff. Just avoid the comment section. It's a great reminder that if you're listening right now, relax your jaw, lower your shoulders, shake it out. <sighs> We've got this. We're going to get through this week. Oh, hey, I was relaxed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, Ikea has a great team behind them. They always seem to be doing really cool things. Even here in Edmonton, when they had all of their leftover Christmas trees, they brought them to some sanctuary and let all the reindeer like rub up against them because apparently it feels so great on their backs. <laughs> it's a true story. Okay. Anyway, their latest move was purchasing 11,000 acres of forest in Georgia that looked like it was about to be lost to development. Pretty awesome considering how this area has a very valuable gopher tortoise. And if they were to take down all of the trees, it would have ruined their life. Mm. So I just think them pulling moves like this, getting Ikea in the news, and then you're like, man, I really do need a new side table. Yeah, I wish that some of the <laughs> team that maybe doesn't work that hard on coming up with cool ideas like keeping forests intact yeah. would put together the furniture for me, though. True. Tell me something good. I believe you can pay to have that happen, but I'm a cheap ass. Uh, my story is about a life-changing backward walker that's helping people move forward. The inventor went into debt launching this company, uh, but said that when he sees the freedom that he's able to give people with disabilities because of his invention, mm -hmm. it's worth going into massive debt. Wow. So he's kind of reversed a walker, like legitimately. Uh, when you think of a normal walker mm -hmm. with the little table on the front uh, and like you're hooked up through the back and you push forward, this yeah. is, it's, it's, pretty much just flipped. Okay, so and does it have like wheels? You like drag it, it okay. rather than push it, yeah. and it gives people more mobility to bend forward to oh, do wow. things like dishes or grabbing things from a table, things like that. Uh, anyway, it's a real game changer apparently for a lot of people that are suffering with a, a disability yeah. that limits their mobility. Anyway, uh, he's, he's doing quite well as far as the invention starting to take off. It's called a life glider. It costs about $700. The company sells refurbished ones for $500. Uh, look into it, though, if you have somebody that uses a walker but often complains that it uh, they're sacrificing their mobility. And we thought, it. like, the tennis ball at the bottom was the best thing to happen to it. Right? Tell me something good. It is time for Unsung Heroes, where we give shout-outs to people, places, and things that don't always get the attention they deserve. <laughs> like Patriots fans, shout-out to them. They will definitely be watching the Super Bowl in their Tom Brady Patriot jersey. And, cry and crying, <laughs> yeah. sobbing. Unsure who to cheer for. <laughs> Shout out to warming up the car for a few minutes longer than your entire commute takes today. Yeah, seriously. You're going to pull up to work and your car's still going to be cold. <laughs> Sorry, hate to break it to you. Shout out to not going out on weekends for like almost a year now. When the bars reopen, we're going to have to train ourselves to keep our eyes open past 10 p.m. Like, people are going to be sleeping in the bar more than usual. <laughs> yeah. Security guards are going to have something to look forward to. Shout out to the excitement you feel when you're a kid and you have a wiggly tooth. Best thing ever. And that not being the same at all when you're an adult. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Facebook. That logged all of us out over the weekend. Some people were freaking out and found it to be suspicious. I didn't care. Take all my info. Don't care. Yeah, what are you going to find out What are you going to do? What are you going to do with it? Shout out to this year being the only year you won't get in trouble for forgetting to book that Valentine's Day rezo. Seriously. Fast food it is. This is a hall pass. Yeah. Shout out to Joe Biden, sorry, President Joe Biden's dogs, Champ and Major, who were both rescues and have officially moved in to the White House. Talk about a glow up. 
Yeah, they're not going to know what to do with all that space. I just picture them running down those real wide hallways, living their best lives. Someone was probably hired specifically just to clean up their poop. Oh, yeah, they got a nice glow up. Good point. Best glow up. Plus, the humans are going to be too busy. They'll just leave them alone to do their own thing. Perfect. And finally, shout out to uh, to traditions, just being dead people guilting us into doing things that they were also just peer pressured into doing. What's an example? Ornaments. (laughs) (laughs) Valentine's Day. (laughs) So Lisa posted on TikTok yesterday and it's taken off. It was telling a story of something that took you way too long to figure out. Yeah, probably 10 years of driving. I didn't realize the snowflake button was air conditioning. I thought it was defrost, (laughs) which is very dumb. Like, I'm aware that it's very, very dumb. I can see how it would happen, though. And there's a lot of people that commented saying that they had the same thing happen to them. In fact, one girl commented saying, I just got my license. I live in Ontario. And I definitely would have been doing that. So thank you for this PSA. Ah, There you go. All right. But also some of the comments were just dumb things that people also didn't realize till way too late in life. For example, um, this one says, my friend thought that shrimp were baby lobsters. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) I had a buddy from Ontario who thought there were pickle farms. He really, when he moved to Alberta to work, he's like, can we go see a pickle farm? And he was dead serious. Yeah, you know, a lot of adults don't, you don't learn that in school, that a cucumber turns into a pickle. Well, what did I read? 40% of American adults think chocolate milk comes from brown cows? Correct, yeah. So, like, I guess these things happen. Mine is, and I'm still not convinced I know. Okay. If it's laptop or laptop. I think it's lap because it's on your lap. But it could Wait, also be on be a lab. lab. But it could be in a lab. Every time I have to go, it's lap. It's lab, I think. It's lab, uh, laptop. Well, there's mine. Uh, You've got another car one? So I had no idea where my block heater plug was for my vehicle, and I'm pretty with it as far as my car usually goes. So I'm looking inside, like I have the hood open. I've even asked colleagues to help me look for it. Nobody can find it. (laughs) Three years, I didn't plug my car in. Like, doesn't have a block heater. I'm thinking, this is crazy. I bought this car in Alberta. I mean, it needs to have a block heater, right? Yeah. So did you find it eventually? I found it. So there's a little, um, at the front of the vehicle, on the outside where the grill is, there's a little circle plug that looks kind of like um, like a cigarette lighter. And that, and there's a, a actual cable cord inside the vehicle. No in way. The back, kind oh, of- it's already <laughs> set up for you. Your car's woke. <laughs> no. So for three <laughs> years, I hadn't, I thought, well, I got a vehicle that doesn't have a block heater in it, but turns out um, it does. What's yours? Oh, we used to drive through the city and I'd see these BOGO signs and I thought it was like a, I don't know what I thought, just a brand of some sort. <laughs> and then uh, the one time I was like, a couple of years ago, I was asking my wife, I'm like, what is this BOGO? And she's like, buy one, get one free. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so over the summer, I had my friend over and we're outside and I saw a spider. So I was like, oh my gosh, will you please get rid of that dandy long legs? And she <laughs> and she was like, um, that's actually called a daddy long legs. And I was like, no, no, no. Anyway, she had to Google it and she showed me that it is a daddy long legs and not dandy. I thought they were dandy because their legs were so long and that was just dandy. <laughs> You know, I actually think dandy long legs makes it's way more sense than daddy. Like the word daddy, it doesn't relate with law having long legs. No, it's it? super creepy and disgusting, actually. You know what? You you may have just given me an idea for a Halloween costume next year, though. I think I want to go as a, like a daddy and uh, have really long legs. I could just buy pants that like go up to my nipples. Yes. Please do that, please. Okay, for you. (laughs) Thank you for the call, Tara. We appreciate you. Thank you. My mom screwed up at a fancy restaurant once. Uh, She grew up like very humble beginnings in Lloydminster and ended up out on a date, a double date with a fairly wealthy dude in Vancouver. And she had never like been at a really fancy restaurant before. That's intimidating to begin with. After the soup... She leaned over to her friend and said, boy, I hope the rest of the meal has more flavor than the soup. And she had just 
eaten the bowl of hot lemon water that was used to dip your hands in. For the ribs. Mom thought it was <laughs> some so kind of lemon, lemon soup. Water, <laughs> lemon water soup. I, the guys must have noticed. Well, it how did they not, not say correct? anything? That's so embarrassing. <laughs> I have you? secondhand embarrassment for your mother. <laughs> Some industries you end up in, uh, I lean more towards negative feedback from the general public, and I guess that makes sense. You're, you kind of sign up for it a little bit, but people can be pretty ruthless. I uh, see this with radio quite often on public forums where people decide to tee off, and there's some passion there, and politicians as oh, yeah. well. They get for it, sure. and for good reason. Uh, yeah. Ron texted it and said, if we're complaining about people that work in specific industries, can we talk about politicians, or did we all get that out of our system a couple weeks ago? Just go to any <laughs> comment section. That's where you can let it all go. Uh, Rick suggested... There's something he notices about teachers that bothers him. No, leave teachers out of this. No? We are so lucky. We are. To have teachers. Of course we are. But Rick What makes, does it say? He makes a point. Teachers spend their days teaching and being the smartest person in the room, which is fine. But it seems to transfer to normal life settings more than I like. Like you're 12 over par on the third hole. I don't need help with my golf swing. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess See, I don't agree with that. I have a teacher friend and she doesn't know the difference between there and there and there and it drives me insane. Okay, but uh, I know you're all of your teacher <laughs> friends and they they are smart people. They're used to being the smartest person in the room. I could see how that would lead to with like grade 4 students. Yeah, but <laughs> All right, Rick making points, but I am not a fan of that. I am a Pro teacher. Danielle says, guys that work at breweries act like they love beer more than anyone else. They do love beer more than anyone else. No, that's like someone working at Burger King thinking they like food more than the clients. Not the case. Also, why do you all have to have beards? Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> if I worked at Burger King, it would be because I like the food more than people, the customers. No. I think you get a free lunch. I think you get a free lunch every day. Just because you go into brewing beer doesn't mean you like beer more than anyone else can. Kelsey wrote in, we love you, Kelsey. Thanks for listening all the way from Saskatchewan. You're the best. She says, um, retail people, listen, I know that your manager, Sandy, is on your ass lately about making sure everyone who walks through the door knows about the sale, but please, for the love of God, read my resting bee face. I don't want to hear about the deals. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it on the list. Oh, that's so good. Hey, I have one. <clears throat> I hope this doesn't ruffle any feathers with any Subway owners. Oh, here we go. It's not the employees at Subway. I've got nothing against them. And I have nothing against the owners of Subway, unless they're the ones that are your sandwich artist. If you get the owner of the location making your sub, they're going to be cheap as hell with all no. of the produce. Yeah. I had to say, like, more, more, <laughs> about 15 times last That's week. That's so embarrassing. And the lady was, like, giving me death no. stares as she was putting Kay. on four more pickles. Do you know what's the funniest prank? Is you get If you lose a bet, you got to go in, and when they're doing the lettuce, you just keep saying more. To the point where, like, <laughs> they have to say, I can't give you more. Like, have it overflow no. to the point where it's like falling off the counter. No. That's so funny. To the point where you can't see the bread anymore. 107. It's your birthday in a week. One week. And you'll be, uh, what, 34? No. 33. 31. Sorry. Oh. 31. I have a problem, though. You set the bar too high with Christmas gifts this year. You went way above and beyond what we'd normally give each other for gifts. Yeah, I got you a lighter a couple of years ago, I think. It was the year I quit smoking the first time, too. And I was oh, like, what yeah. am I going to do with this? Oops. It was shaped in a gun, though. It was kind of cool. It was a cool It was a cool lighter. Uh, but yeah, no, you set the bar so high. Now that you have a birthday so soon after, I don't know what to get you that's like a thousand dollars here's the thing you got me a thousand dollars well you got me a scotty cameron putter which i've been talking about wanting to get for years but they're like what retail 500 you got a good deal on it i got a great deal anyway that that's expensive yeah but also i was thinking back remember when you got me a billboard remember when people would be driving into st albert and it was like home of lisa evans like hilarious gift Mm -hmm, that was super funny 
Yeah, it was really expensive. Yeah, so who okay. cares? So this year I can go real cheap then? Yeah, I just want like a deep and delicious cake. Okay. I don't even need a fork. I'll eat it with my hands. Done. <laughs> SNL just laid the smack down announcing shows five weeks in a row, and they've announced the first three host and guest, and they're all heavy hitters. You ready for this? Oh, yeah. I love it. So coming up this weekend when they return... John Krasinski, obviously best known for his role as Jim in The Office, uh, will be the host. Machine Gun Kelly is going to be the musical guest. Oh, and his new music has just been amazing. I can't wait. Yeah, took me off guard that he (laughs) may have dropped the best like alt-rock album Mm -hmm. of the year last year. Nobody saw that coming, and it is so good. I've been listening to it more lately. And he's got like the swag of dating Megan Fox. He's got it all. Yeah. So good. Other than that rap battle against Eminem, which you got to know, but that's like betting against Brady. You just don't (laughs) do it, especially in the playoffs. Uh, Next up is going to be Canadian... And Schitt's Creek star and creator Dan Levy. The ratings are going to be out of this world. In Canada, for sure. Well, no. But that No. You're right. He has no- this like new worldwide cult following of Schitt's Creek. They were a bit behind. Us Canadians got to it first, but... He will bring a crowd. Yeah, that's true, actually. And he was uh, one of the sexiest men alive this year, too, right? Mm-hmm. He was in the top 30 or something. Uh, and he will be... There with musical guest Phoebe Bridgers, who you're a big fan of. Oh, yeah. And She's a rock star. February 13th, uh, Oscar, Emmy, and Golden Globe winner and Watchmen star Regina King. Nice. Will be on with uh, Nathaniel Ratliff. The, you mean Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter? <laughs> no. He's best known for that son of a man oh. song. I I just mumbled it because I'm not sure I'm allowed to say it. All right. So make sure you're PVRing if you can't stay up late like me. Crazy story here. We have a new clubhouse leader for the dumbest way to get COVID. Oh, no. 15 people were infected in a small Chilean town after attending a birthday party for a cat. (laughs) Have you heard of the new word, um, pangry? No. It's being pandemic angry. Where oh. you read stories like this and it just makes your blood boil. Yeah, you actually, when I was reading the story, I uh, let like a huge exhale go and you were quite stressed. I was like, I, what are you, what's wrong with you over I, there? What happened? You thought I got some bad news or? You're like, I'm just reading a story about a cat. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pangry exhale. It indeed it was. Yeah. So the <laughs> the 15 people have all tested positive oh, for COVID no. since. And sadly, none of them have nine lives. So. <laughs> Screw that. The cat actually did test negative, at least, for our animal lovers out there. Thank Bur- you for that. Great birthday party, dude. Lighter and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.